Games Workshop finally did it. In the recent Nova reveal, they revealed some shiny new Primaris sculpts for Jump Pack Marines. As a Blood Angels player, that has got me seriously excited, so let's start work on our very own Jump Pack Captain. The base for this conversion is an Assault Intercessor, with a very similar starting pose to our Captain. I also need a suitable jumping rock for him, which will be pilfered from this old Assault Marine. For his jump pack, the only one that looks similar to the new model is the one off of the new Commander Dante model, and I don't particularly want to have to butcher the Warden of the Imperium Nihilus to get a new Captain model. It could never hurt you, my beloved boy. Instead, I'm hoping to use this Sanguinary Guard jump pack as the basis for my conversion. I'll be using various other bits from the bits box too that I'll attempt to identify as and when I use them. Let's get to some kit bashing. First off, the Intercessor needs prepping. I removed the push fit chainsaw arm and backpack, and then also cut off the other arm using a hobby knife. This actually wasn't required as I ended up keeping this arm, but I thought I'd leave it in so that you can see that it's not all smooth sailing when it comes to kit bashing. From the bits box, I grabbed an aggressor flame gauntlet, which should be just right for converting his hand flamer. I cut and trimmed both this and the Intercessor Heavy Bolt Pistol, and then plastic glued the two together. For the other arm, chainswords are all well and good, but I wanted a power fist to match with the Blood Angels captain that they presented on Warhammer Community. I used a power fist from the Age of Darkness Sergeant Sprue. These are slightly smaller than the Primaris kits, but with a fancy braided shoulder pad added, it shouldn't be too noticeable. Now, while I am using the Blood Angels Captain image for reference, I thought that the head on the main guy that they revealed looked much cooler, so I picked out a similar looking head from the old Blood Angels Tactical Marines kit. This kit is amazing for Blood Angels conversion bits, though I think it can be a little tricky to get your hands on nowadays. I snipped my Assault Marine off his rock and attempted to stick my conversion in place. I'm skipping through here as I didn't do a very good job of securing him the first time. Now onto the main event, his jump pack. I toyed with the idea of just using the Sanguinary Guard jump pack, but then I had an idea. I used a spare pack from the Vanguard Veterans kit and removed most of the area between the two booster jets. The Sanguinary Guard's more compact jump pack now fits neatly into the gap. While this isn't exactly the same as what we see on the new models, it does give a similar idea, and I actually quite like the fact that the captain might have a big, chunky jump pack, maybe some kind of relic from a bygone age. While I attempt to fit this guy together, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and like the video if you are enjoying it so far. To finish him off, I added him to a larger base and added some bits of corkboard for the lava effect later. Building's done, so let's get him primed, and as per usual, this really ties the whole conversion together and makes it look like it could be a proper Games Workshop kit. Let's get started on painting. While I base coat some Rhinox hide, I just wanted to let you know that if you want to share your hobby projects with me and the rest of the Hobby with Ollie community, check out the link to my Discord in the description below. It's awesome to see what everybody's working on, especially those of you who come along to work on stuff during the live streams, which I run every Tuesday at 7pm GMT. Next up, I added Mephiston Red and applied this all over the model, only leaving Rhinox Hide in the darkest shadows. I tend to go with a heavy volumetric effect when painting my Blood Angels. This means that you're going to get a bright light from the top and to the right, and then in the bottom left quadrant of the model, it's going to be a lot, lot darker. To lean into this even more, a layer of Evil Sun Scarlet was added through the airbrush to brighten up the face and the top half of the model, and with that, we're ready for some brushwork. You could also do this with a brush, I just like to do it with an airbrush as it is a lot quicker. Firstly, a nice thin layer of Rhinox hide for some panel lining. This really helps to get details to stand out from the rest of the armour, including things like the chest aquila. With Rhinox hide on the palette, I also blocked in any pouches and holsters. I next blocked in silver details like the jump pack vents and areas on the gun with Vallejo gunmetal. Long-time viewers of the channel will no doubt be aware of my love for Vallejo gunmetal. The power fist and the ribbing between the armour got a base coat of black. Now as a proud Blood Angel, this guy loves a bit of bling. Using Retributor armour, I blocked out the gold areas like the laurel and his chest aquila. A few touch-ups with Mephiston Red helped to bring back up the colour, including glazing this and some more Evil Sun Scarlet onto the shoulder pads. I also used the Evil Sun Scarlet as an edge highlight, shown here on the jump pad. Now let's turn our attention to the face. With Noln Oil over the silver parts, Reichland Flesh Shade over the golds, I pushed the highlights on the face too, adding flat yellow into the Evil Sun Scarlet and picking out sharp details. 
For the eyes, I applied Bealtan Green over Silver, and then after leaving this a good time to dry, I applied Lime Green, thinned down with a lot of water, to give some colour variation in the centre of the eye. A final white dot was applied in the corner of the eye to indicate shininess. For the gems on the forehead, I started from Mephiston Red, then Evil Sun Scarlet. I then added progressively more and more yellow to the mix, adding into a smaller and smaller area. To get a real gleam, I applied a dot of white just like I did with the eyes. Final details now. For the ropes on the shoulder pad, I based this with Rhinox Height, shaded it with Reichland Flesh Shade, and then highlighted with Vallejo Dark Sand. You can get a lot out of turning your brush sideways here, as it saves you from having to have really close brush control uh, and having to pick out each individual strand of the rope. To all the pouches across the model, I also applied some scratchy highlights of Scrag Brown. They're not in any prominent areas where I really want you to focus on them, so this is just for a little bit more visual interest if you do happen to look there. I applied him to a lava base, and here we have the completed Jump Pack Captain. Thanks so much for watching this episode. Be sure to subscribe so you can see what I come up with for next week's episode. We release new videos every Sunday here on Hobby with Ollie. Also, check out the live stream on Tuesday. And until then, my name has been Ollie. This has been my hobby. And I'll see you next time.